All right, invasion control. This should be a really even square up. Yeah, this is gonna be a battle, man. This is a this is a big square up because both of us really liked invasion control. So this is we knew going into at least this series it was going to be, you know, the map we were playing. So off the break, they send uh, two people mid, two people a side. So they're going for a two -two split. Brandon was a big one on the left side. He realizes another person's over here. He backs up and he's gonna wait for for Ken to help him out. Actually, it's it's Ant who's who's top tree is who's able to help him out from the cross. He goes top tree and is able to see him at this fire car. So huge break. We get the first two kills. We know no one's at B side. AG is actually pinching this out, and he's probably mind blown. Dante is at the mid tank just sitting here. A good good trades go down. We know this. The furthest guy pushed up is Cafe. We're just gonna hit him out here. Really good job. Now everyone is just focused on spawners. Got to make sure we pick up the left side just in case they spawn A. But also once again pick up the obvious B route. They get they get Ant towards the B side. Brandon's there to help though from the cut. He has a one on one with, with Kiz though. Really big one on one. Huge one on one. But they also have people spawning towards the left side. Look at this. Caesar didn't really spawn too close, but he took this route here. And he gets a, a really big kill towards his right side of the map. That's a huge kill on AG of the fire car. Because he gets this kill. Number eight also spawns close towards the A side, so Ken is is massive here at uh, A S and D to stay alive, and he gets that kill, huge kill. This kind of stabilizes a lot more because now we just basically have to look at our mid cut and our you know our regular uh, B route because if they're gonna come off of this and go A, you know number three uh, can pick that up. Or actually, you know, Ken could t technically still go back and forth because number two is coming out spawn. So it doesn't necessarily need to be AG, but he's going to be, yeah, he's going to fill this in. So this is good, good fill in by AG. They start spawning closer towards B side. They're going to try and hit this out, but Brandon is still here pushed up. So he's the first contact. They kill him, but we still have pressure towards the side because we had people mid. So they can just watch from the mid cut and, and try and get this cut off. Just following with the pressure. We see Dante here at the white truck. You know, AG is still watching the mid in case there was someone on their team, you know, wrapping from their spawn to take this route, watch the mid cut for them while the rest of the guys go towards B. But what do you know here? He kills AG. Ann is right here though for the trade and now they have to worry about Ann on the pinch seven picks it up really good job by by kids to pick this up but he actually spawned super close for him to pick this up so if he spawned deeper it would have been a much different story but he's able to just pick this up right away now this pinch from Shotzi might play a big part but thank so they get the last kill on Ken too so this should be um you know at least two people you know stacking if they want they can have someone pushed up to the treehouse like they do here or even push up to DD dvds but a lot of times new york would would push out to try and get like the, that extra positioning and that kind of screws them over because they're only solo capping right now brandon gets his kill on sib and though you know they have these guys pushed out if you get a, a death here it is so much more punishing than if you were stacked and that's what happens here. Like, Kiz, Kiz dies DVD. So, it's a 4v2 now. We can get pushed up in this position. We know Caesar is towards Broken here. Number 8, Paco, is still Treehouse playing for a 1. But Ann has already got pushed up into Broken. So, we're just, like, swarming this site. Brandon has now pushed up through this middle. Knowing that, you know, they could take middle routes like this. So, this is a good read by Brandon. On the zone one source, the clock continues to run. Shotzi and we just the see that they're not on point. We're just trying to make sure that they can't get to point if they do. Amping super ratty here. We just kill some people in the back. Make sure they can't get on point. Huge first round. Zero tick first round. So really, really good defense. Big round by, by Ant. And Brandon, honestly, too. Yeah, Brandon is 7-1. and one. So... We go up 1-0. Now we're just going to go for a guaranteed B. We realized they didn't get B off of their site. 
or their side, their first side. So if we can get B, that's already tick advantage, and it obviously will just give us much better opportunities once we are trying to hit it through towards A. So off the break, Paco actually lands a nade on AG, gets a first blood. So that's a really big first blood, actually. I'm not sure if the... Yeah, I guess and just didn't have a trophy. Oh, no, he throws a trophy. It's just... It's, I guess a little too late. You see him throw the trophy, but AG... Must have died to, like, the max range or something. Dante hits the wall bang. They, you know capitalize on those first two kills but ken's able to stay alive so he gets the two almost gets the third on kids but that kind of stabilizes uh new york for their side and now since we have more you know middle pos positioning and middle pressure we're gonna try and uh hit out like middle to, to give us an option on what we want to do in this next push so ag gets up into the cafe Ant pushes through middle cut. No one on their team watching middle cut because, you know, they're trying to hit us through towards this ice cream side. Get a kill on Paco towards the A side, and that's huge because now AG can now get up, push towards this A point. And it, it, that was like the option play. We get the kill B side and we get the kill A side. We might as well just take take the A side because that we can get some easy ticks there, kind of open it up for, himself, for ourselves. Ken gets a really big kill watching the cross for these two guys on point. Ant's also mid tank. He can get cross kills as well. He's having this guy focused on him the whole time while these other three can focus on their side. He actually wins the gunfight. Ken loses his gunfight, but now we can chow out because we know that there are two here and one of them probably weak. Get them so weak. Unfortunately, Brandon cannot get that kill. If he got that kill, it would have been so perfect because Ann is obviously pushed up to blue now and is trying to, to flank these other two guys. These other guys would have been on their way to push towards the A side to help him out because obviously this number five guy would have been dead. But we do get a tick. Ant's already pushed up towards top blue here. He can just play for spawn kills, try and open, again, open this space up so that these guys off spawn can just easily get to be and and we can guarantee this cap huge two piece holy shit how does he win this one but he, he wins on kids i guess he had his pistol out so him staying alive here top blue really big again for for one and three i also love this this route out of brandon Brennan, instead of just flooding to be with these guys, he's going to go and take a little bit of a different route so he can watch all of mid for for these guys while they get onto the point. Like in this scenario, they see uh, this guy at the mid tank. And we could technically just leave him here and have Brennan continuously watch this and AG could have just stacked with him. But I'm honestly, like he ends up dying anyways because he's challenging him. So this is a good play by AG to, to teamwork this guy mid tank. He was just in blue. Now he's already in your mannequin. Kismet gains that info. And That's still pushed up. So AG is going to just help him out and be like, you know, Brandon, I'll, I'll spawn. Go and stack this with him. I'm going to try and help out and just get kills over here pretty much because we are we are just in their, in their shit right now. And it's just farming. Now, now, in my opinion, I'm just like, okay, just have these guys double stack, you know, Obviously, AG and Ant just die here. But this is kind of annoying because we just we're in such a bad position, even though we were getting all the kills. That's kind of kind of wanna kind of why I wanted them to to stack a little earlier, or at least make sure they didn't die right away, both of them at the same time. So they end up retaking us on this, which is really annoying because we only have two tickets for the round, but we had so much control with what Ant was doing. Now they're pushed up by our shit. AG gets this kill on our base, but again, we're spawning left side and they're just mid and left side themselves and it's just the... Uh, it's just a blend. We do get the kills though mid. Now this is an opportunity for us to just get towards B side. We need to just make waves towards B side because we lose in seven seconds. So, you know, there's at least one guy last alive over here. Ken gets a huge kill. And we actually do end up getting 
the stack on it. So it could have been really bad, but with the team, we were able to push through mid, get those final kills, and what was a butt clinch turns into a uh, guarantee B. So not not the greatest, but yeah, we still got the, we still got the cap, and we have a lively at this moment, and it's just frying. Now, what do you know? Ant doing this, what he does the best, get in their base and just wreak havoc. We already have cafe control. We already have AS and D control. This is a really good round. Like this should be, this should be 100% we win this round. In my opinion. From like practices and from the position we're in. We're up 15-9 with this type of control like this. We're winning every time. Another kill of Mannequin. We're spawning them out now because, uh, you know, Ann is blocking this back here. He sees Skies. He can get a free kill here. They're spawning super deep. AG's holding Cafe. He stays alive for himself. But we're not on point. So that's the biggest thing. Because it took us way too long to cap B, we kind of fucked ourselves over because we can't get people on the point and stack it at this moment. We do this round? Yeah, we do lose this round. That's what's annoying for me because we just didn't have enough time to work with. We should have been able to get B a lot quicker and then the round would have been better. So I, I kind of screwed up saying like we, shouldn't, we, sh we never would lose this round. But I honestly wasn't looking at the clock. I completely forgot. To restructure 23 seconds left. I'm pretty sure we end up losing this round. Oh, Brandy gets a kill towards Treehouse, but Ant dies finally in the gas, uh, in the gas Shotzi, station. AJ gets another kill. Get we start stopping the point. One on one. But again, it, it's only one person at this point, and he gets naded. So he doesn't have a trophy to work with. So even though he does get on the point, he, he can't do anything. He's able to put himself in the objective. Only five more lives remaining for the subliners, but a big nade leads to that kill on the bread. Might just be five lives for New York, but it's only ten. It's too too much time that for them to, or sorry, too little time for for us to work with. Able to keep his life step away. Three seconds on the clock, and anybody even get here. I want to see where where we're. In my opinion, it just took way too long for us to to get onto B or to cap B because Ant. Can go, I guess Ant can go to the point here, but it's not like, I don't know. It's not guaranteed, because he still wants to play spawn kills, but we just have no one to get to the point. So I guess Ant in this position, our only scenario for us to really win is if he gets on point here. But he's just trying to completely like make sure that he's still causing chaos. He's thinking we can get back on the point with 30 seconds left, but I guess it has to be him in this scenario. That's the only thing I can think of. Because it just took us way too long to get B. Yeah. Or, or like, if, if Ant wins this gunfight on number five, we win the round. You know, there's, there's so many little things that you can look at. Because if Ant wins this one-on-one -on -one with number five, Brandon had won his one. AG wins one, his one over here. It's the last guy alive. AG's on point with us still blocking the spawn. So that's how that's how big this two versus five gunfight is right there. Because this number five guy is the one that ends up nading AG off of the point. Yeah. So. Should have been a round win in my opinion, but we kind of trolled by not getting beat quick enough. And then just unfortunate... You know, the kills do go our way in some scenarios, but one of them doesn't, and it costs us just, again, too little time to work with for a lively like that. So, round is tied. They're going with a 2-2, a, a but it's uh, B-side this time. So, again, two guys mid-tank. We knew that they would love to do middle breaks, but instead of having the two guys A-side, they just have the two guys go regular B side. Fine so quickly and that's exactly the case. A little bit of focus through mid Hydra sleeps in through DVD, but for the most part New York firmly planted on this B zone for now. And it's going to wait for us to group up so that we can sort of hit this out together. Already putting himself in a great position to flank. He gets two kills. AG gets one DVD. Huge break off win. Every single engagement. That's already Last guy live mid tank, we run at him. Now this is where it gets dangerous for New York. This is a very, very good break off. Brandon wins the gun front of Paco. He sees one guy go mid cut. He actually wins that mid cut. How does, how does Ken lose this? He must have just he gets run out with a pistol. Yeah, he doesn't see him coming that close. 
over towards the water bridge. I don't even know if Brandon calmed this, actually, now that I think about it. I don't know if he's calming this right now at this point. Because he shot, tries shooting at, at uh, Kiz, but he's in the mix right now, so I don't even know if he calms it. He went up mid. Or, or, or maybe he calmed it, but Ken wasn't uh, expecting him to be there that quick. So what ends up being, you know, a really good breakoff win and us sort of putting us in the tra in the, them in the trap, we get one kill, but our range. biggest, probably our biggest person in, you know, the trap here, this guy mid, gets runs that, gets killed, and then Brandon just gets teamworked on the left side. And that's where it kind of just breaks down. So, Kiz being able to run up mid and get that kill kind of completely breaks our setup. Now they get the kills, they're starting to break on in from their side through mid and, and A side. They can get on A point, so that's that's how quickly, you know, a control round can change. Look at this situation now. Now it looks like we are screwed. But they're only solo capping, so it's not like the worst thing in the world. We're going to try and work this together. Dante gets a two-piece, but we get the guy on point. Continues to keep Sid at least somewhat safe on the zone. Kismet's still alive. Laundry. We get another kill on the guy point. So they only get one tick off of it. Now they're going to go B off spawn. So only one tick is not bad. That's basically what we did in the previous round as well. They all go towards B. We're once again setting up to try and just counter them. But again, trades go down. Kiz wins one in DVD. That's a huge one to win. Throws a nade. Brandon actually runs at him. Gets a kill. So it's still a pretty good trade battle on our end. Make it hell for them. Look at this. We're, we're cross-firing. It's hard for them to cap the point. Hard for them to get on the point with us being DVD and at the broken spot. Or sorry, at the, the treehouse spot. It needs to help on Paco zone, refills middle, but, knows that but again, they need help on point. So he's going to get this kill on Ken, but AG's there for the trade because he's the one who was filling left side. He can pick up our mid cut. And these guys off point can just play their lives. Really good job. Great defenses. We want another defense. So three ticks, that means we have guaranteed defense going into round five if we were good if we were to go to round five. So in this, it's kind of a, a spread play where we're gonna send two guys B side, one guy middle, one guy play for a kill towards A side, and maybe maybe lurk over there. That's what AG's doing. First things first. Optic on the offense. Shotzi looking for kill number twenty-five already, by the way. Casual as the rest of Optic just holding their ground and letting Shotzi get this first tick done. Age gets a kill. He sees the other guy fire a truck. He doesn't win the gunfight, unfortunately. That would have been a massive two piece if we were able to get it. Now you're slowly trying to work up this progression at B, but everybody drops around Shotzi. So he's just trying to stay alive. And still staying alive towards Broken. Or towards Treehouse. I keep calling it Broken. It's been way too long since we scrimmed that I'm calling these everything out the wrong, the wrong call outs. He loved this spot. Being on top of the counter was like freebies for him. So Kiz comes around the corner, he gets a kill on this. They still have to worry about him on their backside. So they don't they have no idea what the fuck Ann is doing over here. Obviously he's jumping to and from treehouse, killing, going for spawn kills, whatever. It's still important for us to get these kills mid cut and DVD though, because he doesn't have everything. You know, age or sorry, Ant is treehouse and then he's top blue. He doesn't have like all of low DVD all the time. He doesn't have the mid cut, so they just have to make sure that they're they're you know focusing these two areas, but making sure that Ann is doing something for the team watching the left side here. And he starts finessing, starts creating again chaos on the backside of their setups. This is an insane, insane play because Kiz moves at this exact right time. He gets a freebie. And now he can stay alive or, or finesse. If you want to stay alive, mannequin, he can stay alive, mannequin. If, if he wants to finesse gas, he can finesse gas and absolutely gun Paco. What the fuck? This is an insane win. Wow. He can get on point for himself now. Number one is coming towards him too. Ken can help him out. Fortunately, he doesn't win the one-on-one -on -one or one-on-kismet. 
but Ant is just a distraction in this moment. So we leave Ant here and we, we can just focus, we can focus B. I don't even like Brandon going over here. Like he can, he can help up or help up Ant, but in my opinion, you just leave Ant. Because you know th at least two or three of them are going to be trying to look for him on this point. On and zones. you just you just ma make sure you guarantee A. And it's just a distraction. So we end up doing that, but I feel like it was a little bit too late. Brandon knows that they're going to be coming from the A side, so he's going to try and be looking for kills, Cafe, and, and AS&D here. He can't find anyone, though. This is, everyone's just missing him by, a, like, one second. So this is weird because we're obviously expecting them... Or we're obviously ex expecting Brandon to have something over here, but he can't find anyone. So he finally hits the mid cut, and he's able to like actually. We actually end up just playing for it because he he gets the weirdest timing on everyone on their team. He can't even find one. So a good thing that we were still looking mid cut because you know Brandon didn't have it in that one second. Because if we're not looking mid cut here, they just kill us from mid cut, and they probably just get off off the point. But I think this is who's yeah, it's Ken. Ken Ken's still watching mid cut. We're watching our backside too. Our full our full pinch. Get the kill DVD. Now I can guarantee B. Really good job. So it was honestly like a 3v4 at that point. Or no, it was like a 3v3. I don't know what Caesar's doing. Caesar, does he, does Caesar hear him or does Caesar like expect him to be towards A? I'm not sure what Caesar's looking for here. They obviously, ex I mean... I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of what was going through his head. Because obviously he thinks that someone's behind him. I, they're still looking for someone. So maybe he thinks that Brandon had got through. But it's a 3v3. Good thing we're still watching mid-cut once again. And we're watching you know, our other angles that we need to watch. DVD and, and our back. And we can guarantee B here. And how does he not win that? What the hell? Whatever. Doesn't win it, but it's still Sunset Push and we get the guarantee B. That's fine. AG's pushed up Cafe here. Already front progression towards A side. Sees kids can get this kill. Finesse his life. We get the kill on Paco on the B side. So now we can, you know, set up just a, a normal team break. Minute 10 on the clock. On the over extension on the this guy's inside, or sorry, what is he? In front of the, in front of the cafe door behind this little like cinder block jersey barrier thing. So AG can't see him, but he's gonna be able to get inside a mannequin. So once again, a lot of times teams would try and break uh, the A point or just capture the A point first is getting that mannequin control first. If you can control mannequin and if you can control cafe, you should be like at least winning, you know. A lot of gunfights and getting a lot of control towards the A side and should be capping it. Both of them run through Mannequin, get a two piece on the backside. That's two free kills. Last guy alive, it was the guy hiding behind the barrier. He's the one who kills Brandon, but we should be able to trade that instantly. Ant's looking for him there. Actually, he, you know, he doesn't get the kill, unfortunately. But he's looking for him. He knows he's 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 in cafe, so we're we're accounting for him. Ag, after getting this kill, finesses towards the backside, gets a kill on Kismet here. Now he's focused on this back station or gas station. Again, Ann is still playing in mannequin. He he knows that someone was still alive cafe, so we need to play for him. Obviously, Brandon plays for him off spawn. I'm surprised, you know, Ken didn't look that side, but he, I think it was trying to teamwork AG towards the front side of point, which is obviously step number one, which is, you know, threat number one. And then we were going to have, you know, the other guys play for the cafe guy, but Brandon wins the gunfight on the guy AS and D. And sees, you know, Paco push up. Ken wins that gunfight. Ken's still on point. And can still play his life in mannequin and start finessing still. We're streaking now. AG streaking from spawn. We're still making their lives miserable. It's 16 to 8 lives. This is just... This is just unlosable. Especially because we're, you know, we're capping the point. 
Kenny gets a two piece. He thinks we won over here. I think we end up getting retaken right here. Yes, a Caesar wins that on Brandon. But look at the, the time now. We have 49 full seconds to work with rather than wh whatever we had in that other round. 14 to 6 lives too. Plus we had the streak coming in. So 14 4 lives with 47 seconds. Much better scenario than the other one. 13 to 4. You just gotta you just gotta play fast. Play play trades together. Now that two piece is not great, but you just gotta you just gotta play trades, play fast together. We know this guy's mid tank, run at him. Boom, ten to one lives. Last guy Paco, front cafe. Ant gets the kill. What does he end up and ending? Thirty five and twelve. An insane performance. Actually incredible performance. He lets out the Goku scream because he's just feeling himself. An insane, insane map out of out of Ant.